Hey, what's up, Kim peeps? What in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to predict whether or not a physical or chemical process is thermodynamically favored by determination, either quantitatively or qualitatively, of the signs of both delta H, delta S, and calculation or estimation of delta G when needed. All right, now that's a lot. That's our big overarching goal here. We're gonna start just with delta S. Break it down. Number one, we are going to predict the sign and relative magnitude of the entropy change delta S associated with a chemical or physical process. Number dose. We are then going to calculate delta S from the standard entropies of the reactants and products in a chemical reaction. All right, so first let's start off with the second law of thermodynamics, which simply states that entropy or disorder of the universe will increase over time. Now what the heck is entropy? Well, it's just a measure of disorder and we use the symbol S to represent entropy. And usually it has the units of joules per mole Kelvin. Now you try to wrap your head around the idea of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. I want you to think about chucking a bunch of bricks off the back end of a truck. Well, certainly there's a possibility that when you chuck them all off the back end of a truck, they're all gonna stack themselves up all neatly and perfectly. However, it's more likely that when you chuck them off the back end of a truck, they're gonna end up in a disorganized, disordered pile. Likewise, if you were to think of, say, a sample of gas, it's more likely that you would see that sample of gas dispersed throughout the entire container and not organized all nice and neat into one little corner or one little side of the container. Not gonna be all stacked together like a nice pile of bricks. Disordered, crazy. Now, as we think about entropy, as we think about the second law of thermodynamics, some things to keep in mind. One, entropy will increase with, this, with the dispersal of particles. Entropy will increase with this with the dispersal of particles. In other words, we see things that are more disordered, the more spread out they are. Second, Entropies of gases are larger than liquids and liquid entropies are larger than solids because the volume and dispersal of particles increases from solid to liquid to gas. So as you take a look at this thrilling image that's on your screen, think about water in the solid state versus the liquid state versus the gas state. Entropy increases as we go from solid to liquid to gas. The particles are more spread out and they're more disordered. Very organized in a solid, very unorganized, very disordered in the gas. Boom. Entropy as it relates to states of matter. Pause the vid. Stare at this image. Ooh. It's also important to note that entropies are greater for more complex molecules. So, for example, if I had a molecule of NO compared to a molecule of NO2 compared to a molecule of N2O4, the entropy increases as we go from NO to NO2 to N2O4 because we have a greater number of electrons that exist in those more complex molecules and the types of vibrational and rotational motion that can occur within the bonds. It will be greater when the number of individual particles of the same phase increases. So as you take a look at the two images, we've got a sample of gas made up of two particles versus a sample gas made up of four particles. We would say the entropy is greater here because we have a greater number of particles and a greater number of possible arrangements or microstates. Entropies are also greater with increased temperature. So as you look at your two samples of a gas here, image on the right, we would say would have a greater amount of entropy or a greater amount of disorder due to the greater amount of kinetic energy. And entropies are also greater when a single gas occupies a larger volume. Boom. Again, the more spread out, the more dispersed, the more disordered, disorganized. Often, microstates are referenced when trying to explain this idea. If you take a look at the image on your screen, we've got a sample of, let's say, gas that consists of four particles. Each of them are colored differently to help us better understand their location. It's more likely that we would find the gases more spread out than we would, say, all stuck together on one side. There's a greater probability of having this option than the others. More disorder. Fourth thing to keep in mind, the entropy of a perfect pure crystal at zero Kelvin is given a value of zero. In other words, at absolute zero, the theoretical coldest temperature you can get, all molecular motion stops, even the movement of electrons. So those perfect pure crystals are assigned entropies of zero. 
but zero Kelvin is theoretical. And therefore, in the real world, all individual substances above zero Kelvin will have positive entropy values. And then lastly, the entropy change for a system or a reaction is calculated from the absolute entropies of the products and reactants. So very similarly to how we determine the enthalpy change for a reaction based on the enthalpies of formation, we can similarly calculate based on the entropies of the products and reactants using the formulas on your screen. Important to recognize that if the delta S of a system is negative, then there's a decrease in entropy. And if the delta S of a system is positive, then there's an increase of entropy. Pause the vid, stare at this image, ooh. All right, let's take a look at a couple of examples. It says, which of the following substances is likely to have the higher positional entropy? Aqueous hydrochloric acid or gaseous hydrochloric acid? Answer, gaseous hydrochloric acid. Again, your gases further spread out than those things in solution and therefore will be considered to have a greater entropy. Solid H2O or liquid H2O? Correct answer, liquid H2O. Your liquids less organized, more disorganized than your solids. Argon at five atmospheres or argon at 0.3 atmospheres. Both of them are gases. Again, the one at lower pressure implies that it occupies a greater volume. Solid P4 or P4O10 gas. Correct answer, P4O10 gas. Your gases, greater entropy than your solids. Additionally, P4O10 is a far more complex molecule, way more electrons than P4. Finally, NO2 gas or N2O4 gas. Again, both gases, but here, N2O4, more complex molecule, greater number of electrons, therefore, greater or higher entropy. All right, now let's take a look at a couple of reactions and see if we can't predict the sign of the entropy change. In this first example, you got aqueous ions coming together, precipitating out as a solid. This implies that delta S is negative. We're going from aqueous, more disordered, to solid, more ordered. So negative delta S. Take a look at the next example. Solid ammonium chloride decomposes to form ammonia gas and hydrogen chloride gas. Going from a solid to two gases. Delta S is positive. Very ordered state with the solid, very disordered state with the gases. And finally, in this last example, hydrogen gas plus bromine gas coming together to form two moles of hydrogen bromide gas. So a little trickier here. We've got gases forming gases. Additionally, we have the same number of moles of gaseous reactants as we have moles of gaseous products. In this case, delta S is question mark, or we can't predict it here. There are some situations where you won't be able to predict, based on the reaction alone, what the sign of delta S is gonna be. Boom! And that does it for this video. Have a fantastic day.